yeah, pastoral errors is where I'm going to focus. Um, and here, as, as in um, other uh, land use systems, ecosystems, one health um, is vital for ensuring the health, healthy people and healthy livestock. Um, for those who are not aware, pastoralism, pastoralism is a livelihood system in which, in which livestock dominates and a movement across a rangeland or a dryland landscape is necessary. To use it to use the patchily distributed resources. Um, so uh, rainfall, variability of rainfall is a key driver of this and um, uh, this results in very variable uh, vegetation. Um, uh, so pastoralists need to have the, the ability to move across that landscape and use for example dry season and wet season grazing areas. So it's it's different. It's different when, when we're working with these systems. Um, it requires different approaches, um, different entry points, um, different technical support, etc. So. Okay, so let's talk about uh, uh, where where the environment comes into one health. So. Um, one idea that I've been pushing is, is that there are like two parts to this. Um, there's the, the environment aspect that's a key pillar of One Health. Um, so here we're talking about the land and the resources which interact with the animals and the people, et cetera, et cetera. But then there is um, the other part of, of what we can call um, the environment, which are more external environmental forces. So things like climate, uh, pollution, these kind of things, which are, are bigger and, and we could say external to that kind of one health um, triads or, or that one health a uh, connection um, of of the land, the land and resources, and the people and the livestock, and uh, and and the wildlife, and um, and this is something that I th I think we're still not really uh, talking about or or bringing into our work. It's either kind of one or the other. So so kind of what we see um, in what I've seen in big discussions on one health uh, globally. Uh, we tend there tends to be more of a focus on the environmental forces aspects, but then, for example, in the work of Heal, um, we're focusing more on the land and the resources, but quite often the other aspect gets uh, gets missed. So, so really, from an environmental perspective, we need to think of both. We need to think about the land and the resources and the health and its connection to the people and the livestock and the wildlife at, at the local level, but we mustn't forget that there's also environmental forces that impact on all of these um, as well. So if we're, and if we're um, <clears throat> a nice uh, uh, saying or a nice analogy um, for, for that um, about how uh, livestock, how, how rangeland's health is important together with livestock um, health and together with people health is as the mercy pastoralists of Ethiopia say, if you only have two cooking stones, you will never cook anything because your pot will basically fall off the fire. You need to have those three cooking stones. <clears throat> you need to have those three pillars um, of livestock health um, to, to move forward and have a healthy overall system. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a problem staying on the slides here. Um, okay, so just what is rangeland's health? Let's remind ourselves about this. Um, so a definition here is the degree to which the integrity of the soil and the ecological processes of rangeland ecosystems are sustained. Um, some important points here. Um, rangelands are ecosystems. They're, they're made up of, of different parts and, and the health of those different parts um, is often, um, if, if, if you add up the, the sum of those individual parts, um, it's often of greater value. No, what am I trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say. The sum of those individual parts um, uh, can be of lesser value than the value of the whole system. 
So we need to think about the value of the whole system as well as the value of um, the individual parts. And again, this is probably something that we're not paying enough attention to is understanding what is a healthy rangeland as a system and how do we um, support the health of that system as well as the individual parts. It's easier um, and less complex to focus on parts of that system. So, so the land or the trees or the vegetation, um, it's easier to focus on the health of these than really understanding how this all works together and um, the health of the ecosystem as a whole. Um, it's a very complex, uh, complex issue. Uh, rangelands are very complex. Um, they, um, uh, we, we've got that complexity of the climate, the rainfall variability, um, the soils, um, uh, the nutrients, the, the cycles, they're very un, unpredictable. Um, yes, we can see certain cycles of, of climate influence, but as we know, um, there's often um, uh, droughts are a, are a common feature. Um, we also have floods in other parts of the world, there, there's snows. So it's very difficult and a complex system to work with. Um, and when we're trying to support the health of the system as, as a whole, this makes it very difficult for us. Um, the minimum, I mean, the minimum standard for us is really to prevent um, human induced loss of that health. So at the very least, let's work to ensure that the, the human influence on rangelands is, is reduced or minimized. That's our minimum standard. Moving um, beyond that, we, we want the rangeland health um, to be improved. We want productivity to be improved. Um, and as I said before, it's not just about the individual parts of the rangelands, but it's about the health um, of that system as a whole. So uh, just, um, I'm sure all of you have got some um, very um, clear ideas um, about the linkages between uh, rangelands health um, animal and human health, um, but here, here are a few examples. Um, things like life cycles of pests, diseases and parasites that live in rangelands and affect animals and humans. So the way that you manage that rangeland, the way that you manage um, the presence of, of livestock on um, the rangelands um, will influence these life cycles. Um, also, the number and type of livestock and wildlife supported by rangelands um, influences the health of that rangelands. So again, things like, I mean, herd management is very important. Um, the interaction between livestock and wildlife um, as well as part of that. Um, the role of animal de densities in disease transmission. So ensuring that uh, um, this, this is um, taken into account. Um, the reduction of zoonotic infectious pressure in healthier animals. Um, so understanding um, the, how zoonoses work and, uh, and can be uh, transmitted. I'm not an expert in this, so please don't ask me any questions about this. Um, rangeland foods um, are a source of human food and particularly during drought periods. Um, so a, a direct linkage there between the rangeland health and human health. Um, and then a lot of rangeland products are used um, for medicines, detergents, disinfectants, um, et cetera, as well. Um, human interventions impact on rangelands negatively through bad management or bad use and positively through good management. So as I said, you know, our, our minimum here, our minimum want is to ensure that human interventions <clears throat> are not having a negative impact. Um, and then of course, um, you know, land use change um, is a key driver of uh, disease spillovers from wildlife to humans and resulting in, in pandemics. Um, so, so managing the land well, ensuring um, that there's good land use planning, um, there's good effective use of the land um, is all part of this. So, 
Um, I'll skip over that last one anyway, because that was just an introduction to the Hill project for those who didn't know, but we've had that. Um, so um, within Heal, um, what um, Ilri has been doing with the other partners is um, supporting uh, a process of participatory range and management. And here is a, a quick summary diagram of this. Um, it's basically something very similar to participatory forest management that basically works through understanding the rangeland and the resources there, um, looking at what institutions exist and whether these um, need strengthening or whether they we need something new, um, establishing those if we need something new, uh, defining the rangeland management unit. Um, and then once this is done, working with the communities um, to develop a rangeland management plan, which will focus on uh, the health um, and improving the productivity of the rangeland, restoring it, etc. And then uh, potentially establishing a rangeland management agreement with local government, which gives more security um, for the rangeland management plan going forward, um, and then implementing that plan. Um, so, so this is a process that Uri has been involved in in developing. And uh, within HEAL, we're seeing how this can come together with the other components, with the health and the livestock components. Um, ideally, you know, this, this can be an entry point for the whole uh, One Health um, intervention, because once we understand how people use the land, uh, what are the challenges with using that land, we can also see how livestock health and human health can, can support this as well. Um, it's not an easy process. And as, as we'll mention later, there, there have been some challenges or still some challenges on trying to overcome those, what still are um, kind of sectoral thinking and sectoral um, boundaries between um, this component and the other components. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so um, one of the first steps is mapping. Um, so it's mapping the rangelands, understanding the rangelands, the natural resources there, the health of those resources, etc. Uh, this is done through a participatory process and, uh, and then um, uh, drawn um, on paper and uh, sometimes, cred uh, sometimes um, digitized as well. I'll show you some of, uh, and, and you can, what's also can be done is uh, mapping the livestock routes and I'll show you some examples later. Um, then we've we've also got the strengthening of rangeland management institutions, as I mentioned, and uh, developing an integrated rangeland management plan. Um, and my understanding is with with Hill, it's it's trying to bring this rangeland management plan together with the the plans for the the livestock health and the human health um, component as well. So ideally, we should have a one health management plan. Um, which incorporates all three and shows the linkages between all, between all three. Um, so these are some of the things that have been done um, on the range and um, health side of things. Um, uh, I haven't been directly involved in this um, and the work has been carried out by, by my colleagues. Uh, so basically really trying to understand um, the context here, um, the challenges that communities are facing, how they're currently managing the rangelands, um, and uh, the, the specific status and of the different sites where HEAL is working. Um, the livestock route mapping, as, as I mentioned, so the idea with the livestock route mapping, it wasn't just understanding how uh, livestock moves, um, but also um, the idea was that if we can find places where uh, livestock are converging on these routes, then these potentially could be places where the One Health units could be established. And I'll show you a map um, in, in the next slide to explain that a bit more. Um, and then, as I said, you know, the, the range and health component shouldn't be a component on its own. It needs to be integrated with the, um, 
with the other components. Sorry, this is a mistake. They should be working to integrate Rangeland's health um, in the Heal One Health units. Um, so it's yeah, it's bringing bringing the Rangeland health together with the others. We don't want it to be an independent component. Each we need three very integrated components here. And then in in one area, um, actually moving forward from the the development of a range and management plan into that management planning process. And this is, this is what the project is now focusing is implementing these range and management plans um, with the other components. Um, so here's, here's an example um, of a livestock reach map. Um, that's been done. Um, these, these maps have not been verified on the ground, so um, they're not for sharing. Um, but this, this basically shows, you know, if, if we have an understanding of, of how, how the livestock moves around the landscape, then we can see places um, where potentially, uh, for example, uh, uh, one health unit could be established. Um, we can also see places where there might be challenges, uh, you know, conflicts with other land use um, or conflicts, interactions, say, for example, between livestock and wildlife, if, if there was a wildlife area there or, or with people, etc. So understanding how livestock move across the landscape um, is across the range and it's a very important part of this. Um, the, the group also mapped out livestock markets um, and the different kinds of livestock markets. Um, so just to talk a little about, bit about this, the challenges, I mean it's, it's really not an easy task um, to uh, integrate Rangeland's health within uh, One Health. Um, I think within HEAL, I mean, this is perhaps a little bit more challenging because we do have uh, three different organizations um, kind of responsible, each responsible for each of the components. Um, and in some ways that makes it more challenging to actually bring the three together. Um, Heal, Heal, of course, is you know, moved on now from the inception phase um, into implementation. And I, I think there's definitely um, a lot of um, willingness to, to try and bring these three components together. Um, because at the moment they are, I think, sitting um, as quite individual components or certainly the Rangeland's health is a little bit outside. And we really need to, to work more um, to bring this together. Um, so it, it, is one, it is a one health process. It's not three components linked. We don't want three components linked. We want a one health process. Um, and I know that there's some of the people involved in the implementation um, here um, at the webinar. So it would be good to also hear from them um, in the in the questions, uh, questions and answers session um, to talk about this more than the challenges of, of how to do this. Um, as I said, also addressing the wider environmental influences. Um, this this hasn't really been done. You know, we have been focusing much more on the local level, but we shouldn't forget that there are those kind of environmental influences as well, uh, whether it's it's climate or pollution, these kind of aspects. And and I think we we as Heal we have an important role to to show to show good practice in how. Um, the environment really can be brought into One Health, both at the local level as, as a pillar with the livestock and the human, um, but also to look at those uh, broader and wider environmental influences as well. And, and this is something that we have been trying to do, you know, where, where there are One Health discussions um, or opportunities to present um, One Health in its entirety, we have been doing that. Um, at national and global levels. Um, and I think and a, a, a third challenge um, that's been facing um, us, particularly Ilri, is not having full-time full-time local presence on the ground. And for something like 
uh, range and health and building the capacity of communities um, and take them through that po process of participatory range and management, it really is important to do that. Um, these, these kind of systems approaches, um, they're not easy and they do take, take time and working with communities step by step through these processes is really important. Um, so ILRI will be looking to to improve that presence at the local level going forward. Um, so just, just as a bit of a change now, um, I would like to show you a film from Mongolia. Um, in Mongolia, um, they have also been implementing a participatory uh, range and management approach, um, but they have taken it a bit step, a, a strong step further really. Um, they have, um, done a they've got a very strong range limb monitoring um component um and they've also taken it further in terms of linking uh the range limb's health um to um like trace traceability of animals um etc and and this is showing good benefits for them in terms of marketing their products um and uh and improving the value chain. So it's just a, it's a five minute film here. Um, and let's hope this works. So. Is the sound okay? Yep, great, thank you. Eruzmal, <laughs> Дараа Үнтэй үйлдэл мал сөрөг маань байнгын шим тэжэлийн дутагдлыг орох энэ нь мах болон бусад бүтээгдэхүүний чанар буурах эрсдэл үүсч байна. Дэлцэр битгий байгаа хэвэрлж байдаг. Аа үйлэрлүү зэрлэлийн цаагаад өгч байдаг. Одоо тийм зүг цөвт байхгүй. Чи өтөр буудсан одоо хамгаалагдахгүй газрын хөрс идэгдээд баг зарим газар нь бол баг урахгүй байч хэд. Эрүүл бичээрийн үйлчлэл шимтэй үүс урамлаар тэжээгдсэн. Эсвэл чалгалагдсан бичээр шин муутай хүний эрүүл мэндийн сөрөг нөлөө үзүүлэх магадлалтай хог урамлаар хоолсон эсхийг тогтох боломжтой болж байна. Үүнд ус цаг өөр байгаль орчны хяналтын хүрээлэнгийн Монгол орны бичээрийн төлөв байдлын сэргэх чадварын лавлгаа жил бүрийн ашиглалтын нөлөө үндэх газрын харилцаа геодезийн зураг зүйн газрын фотомониторингийн мэдээллийг ашиглан тогтох боломжтой болсон. Ингээд нэг яриа байгуулад явах юм бол тэр боломж юм шүү энэ гаднаас одоо холоо өрөөс нь үүсэж байгаа мал ч юм бол одоо хөрч төрж орж ирэл за энэ миний чиний гихгүй ингээд малгаа зөрчил гараад ирлээ гэхдээ урдаас нэг үжүүлж харуулчих нэг эрчлэгээтэй хадны нэг өрхийгээд авахгүй мэдээж хүн авахгүй мэдээж тэгээ тэр хамгаалж юм байгаа тэр хэдэн малдаа зөвхөлөө бэлчээрээ ингээд малгаа чанар зөвлөд эсгээ байж ирэл болох юм байна гэж бодож байна ер нь малчид бидэнд одоо хамгийн нэн толгоомс асуудал болоод байсан одоо энэ жилэсчилд өсч байгаа малыг одоо зах зээл эргэлтэнд оруулах асуудал бол хамгийн чухал асуудал байсан. Шууд үйлдвэртэйг ингээд харилцдаг болсноос бол одоо малын тодлохоос тодорхой хэмжээнд буурах за малын тодлохоо буурснаас бэлчээртэй бас зөв нөлөө үзүүлэх за ер нь цаашдаа бол ингээ мас Монголын мал ажих бас зөв гольдрлогоо орох чихэн болов гэсэн ийм бодлоор бол мал чим ер суралцж байна. Аа малыг одоо ийм хэлж ингэж Зах зээл шилжүүлэх энэ маш алдан талын ачаалагдалтаа нэгдүгээрт малыг эрүүл байлах хоёр дахь ус энэ нь бас энэ хулгайн асуудлыг бас зогсоохд их чухал ачаалагдалтаа юм гэж үгүй юм малчид ч гэсэн ярьж байгаа. 
Мадем Динге, Шлия Бухи, Амит Мадозан, Мадем Арте, Бутик, Хуни, Теверт, Хиоцет, Тухан Деверт, Тин Тадар, Шадал Тин Пасту, Орчатом, Медель, Симбехугот, Хиан Шадал Тин Ажита, Трудго, Теверт, Гуиских, Падам Штевен. Теверт, Дигдижир, Сан Амит Мадозан, Мадем Арте, Бутик, Хуни, Орнотек, Низким, Бен, Шадал Тин Сигудир, Шадал Тин Тагалдал, Махне Уйдур, Дегов, Падам Штевен. Уйдур, Дегир, Сан Дару, Теверт, Дигдижир, Сан Мадик, Тосудур, Мадем Емч. Эрфи Айти уничтожит хоромчур тазн. Худен авсам мадин та мадем дин герчидиа дерих таата тарснар. Систем дер худен авсам гиди тимдилиек махни уйдур хин. Махни уйдур тургатсам мал хариндрун сагин хоксан сойтанд байхугот. Нятадган дархин омун орин дугарар буртугитин. Нятадган ихисикт тахин дабтуд хоку дугарик бар кад хидбрер хивидич мал бурик уйдурин бук темчлар темчат тагал тазн. Этисн Эрдичин Гардерача Бутейк Тунд, Гардаусин Шаша Хатаксанар, Тос Бутейк Тунд, Гардаусин, Эрут Мендин Батлата, Мусин Бутейк Тунд, Базун. Гардаусин, Эрут Мендин Батлата, Мусин Бутейк Тунд, Махмарт Кампания Нерим Барани Дедгурер, Тошалтин Шаумар, Амджалте Хотл Дадагдау. Энуер Тошалтин Апликейш Нашигатан Бутейк Тунд, Гардаусин Шадахат, Тон Санер Хотевеля. Энуер Тошалтин Гардаусин Шадахат, Тон Санер Хотевеля. Усия Юдгова и Климатха Хангач, Нигми и Рудменди Хамрат, Мадем Дик, Сакта, Мириштин Хенат, Махни Уйдуру Тин Хариус Трин, Доктор Сак, Доктор Хай, Болтон Хариусюд, Мадем Уйдуру Тин Хенат, Хартур Токсин, Тархаха и Стрик Ворот, Мадем Уйдурайк Тастин, Доктор Кихмит, Озен Даута Тейм, Сайшлат, Махни Экспорт Тейм, Эхни Шатни Шарт Роди, Монгол Осуд Хариусюд, Болтон Штейм Уйдгик. Отчуин, девчонки, тихо, долго сидим, хорошит Okay, so um, yeah, in in conclusion, um, for sure, range range since health is uh, is a critical part of uh, one health, um, um, and and as I've tried to show, um, you know, my my thinking is that there are you know two parts to this. There's the the um, the range and health part with the livestock and people, and then there's the environmental uh, factors that influence all three components. Um, certainly within heal, you know, we've recognised that there's the importance to understand the local context, how the land's being used, the range and status. Um, the range and challenges, et cetera, before moving forward. Um, but also um, it's important to have that solid management governance context before activities begin. So working to ensure that there are strong institutions, there, are, there is a, a management process in place. Um, and then I, I hope within that film that I've just shown that, you know, we can move, um, we can move also forward from this, you know, and think more wide, widely about how uh, the health of the rangelands with um, the livestock health and the, the, the human health, you know, how, how these three really can come together and, and um, work to, we can work to set up systems like that system set up in Mongolia that that brings those three components together and and if if we can show that the health of all three um, or, or the health of the livestock and the health of the rangelands you know are there and are being addressed it can have advantages um, for for the livestock um, production system for livestock marketing and of course ultimately for human health um, so that's all from me i'm very happy to um answer any questions but i hope others on the hill team will also um contribute um because as, as siobhan said i'm though i am a member of the team i'm i'm not actually there in ethiopia working on the ground ethiopia or kenya 
and Somalia working on the ground. So um, we can surely benefit from others that are doing that. So thank you. Thanks, Fiona. And I can see on that note that Badassa has just joined us. Uh, unfortunately, I think he missed most of your presentation. Uh, but Badassa is one of those people who is on the ground and, and doing some of his work. Um, perhaps I can kick off the Q&A just by um, asking a question. Well, I have a couple of questions, but I'll, I'll see how we go. Um, the video you showed emphasised traceability, which as a veterinarian, I identify as being a livestock intervention and um, you know, could, could be effectively implemented only by one sector, meaning the livestock sector and, and the degree to which then that integrates with um, human health is I think even questionable in developed countries. So rarely, for instance, are foodborne disease you know, outbreaks in Australia or the UK actually trace back to farm level, despite there being quite a strong traceability system. So I wanted to understand that from your perspective as a, as a rangeland health specialist, is traceability something that you identify as being a component of rangeland health? Or is that for you something that is done on the livestock sector side? Does that make sense? <laughs> Sure, but uh, I'd, I'd rather not talk about sectors and sides and um, components. You know, I, I think what what we should be striving here for is is a one health that breaks down the sectors, breaks down the components, etc. And um, you know, I, I think though though we're trying very hard to do that, I not sure that we are progressing very well. I mean, I, I understand that there are, you know, people certainly have different expertise, um, sectors do have responsibilities, but, you know, I, I would challenge Heal and I, I challenge One Health um, as, as an approach is really how, you know, how to move forward and, and to, to start breaking down what are still, uh, <laughs> boundaries um, between the three components. Um, yeah. Perhaps I should rephrase. Um, I, I was surprised as a veterinarian to see the emphasis on, on the traceability side of it. What I was expecting was that there would be more emphasis on, on, um, on the, you know, the, the, the dry land management or the, the, the plants, the, the um, that side of stuff. So I'm just wondering if if there's a if what we're struggling with is a conceptualization around how we view this pathway of rangeland health leading into livestock and environmental. Oh, sorry, livestock and human health. That, that's I guess what I'm saying. So, so because because in the video it said pasture was important, but it didn't really emphasize what was happening at that level to really understand how that was was being enacted. And you and you also sort of mentioned that that's the goal of rangeland health, right? It's to actually improve rangeland health. So yeah, does that sure. make sense? Um, yes, yeah, so I, I mean, in Mongolia, they do, that film only did actually only touch on it, um, but they do have a very extensive uh, rangeland health monitoring system, um, collecting information at local level and, uh, and that being fed up or mapped to a national level uh, monitoring of range and health. So, so there is for sure, there is um, a lot being invested in, into that as well as, uh, as what we saw in the film, which, which was kind of showing a bit more how, how that yeah. links, yeah. Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> um, I, as I say, it was just more coming from the perspective of, oh, do you actually encompass that in range and health? Okay, so um, I'll turn it over to others. If, if other people have some questions that they would like to ask uh, in the chat box, uh, I can see that Basuru has his hand up. Please go ahead, Basuru. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks to Fiona for uh, raising the environmental issue. I just have a general comment following what uh, 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 Shivan just mentioned. Uh, Pastoralism is the best example of physical and social environments that need to be taken into account. So if we look at the physical environment, looking at the rangeland, range uh, what we miss 
in the One Health is that uh, even if we take One Health, it has been driven for a long time by the vets because of the zoonosis. So what we have not seen from the environmental specialist is the contribution or the position of the environment bringing evidence that show the contribution to health or aspect uh, in health shortfalls. So uh, nobody will bring the environmental sector into one health, but it's the environmental specialist to bring their contribution, their value, their uh, evidence to improve the health. I think for me, this is what we need to, 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 to show. Even sometimes when we talk about the three pillars, we don't necessarily need to go into three pillars. I like the, the metaphor of three stones, but sometimes with two stones, you can do a lot on health. For example, with the video, the range land and the livestock production system. When you push this at the end, without having a linearity of uh, impact, you can show that at the end, the, the impact on health is evident. And this is what we want the environmental specialist to bring uh, into the, 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 the One Health uh, 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 aspect. The last point I want to, to make is that uh, uh, we have a very strong institutions and in, uh, working on One Health, but what we lack is the environmental sector. And sometimes when we talk about environment, people will talk about wildlife, nobody will talk about rangeland, but it's scattered. So we need a, a very specific contribution of the environment, be it on different angles, to provide uh, this contribution and explain how it can be improved. It's not to show the importance of one sector against another, but the contribution of each sector as far as health is concerned. So I would like to thank you. I really enjoy the field. Thank you. Thanks, Pastor Fiona, are you still with us? Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, would you like to respond? Um, no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think I, I, I think they're all good points. Okay. Uh, do we have, so Esther, I can see your hand is up. Go ahead, please unmute yourself. So, so I, I wanted to unmute myself and not put down the video. <laughs> well, let me let me put on the video anyway. <laughs> so Biona, thank you so much, and and thank you also for um, for really ha having spearheaded huh, in bringing in the participatory rangeland management and environmental health more generally into here. I mean, uh, um, yes. Uh, I mean, also, as you know, here is very much about services. Huh? And I think for us as, as veterinarians or public health um, uh, specialists, huh? uh, we talk a lot about environmental services, but we have a very vague idea uh, about uh, this. So how, how do these services uh, look like? And certainly this, this video, uh, from Mongolia has, has shown, uh, well, has emphasized exactly uh, this part on possible services. Uh, uh, and I think, as you know, in, in Chile, uh, it may take a bit of longer time to, to, to now really identify these synergies between the human animal and the environmental health is also being that uh, the other systems, I mean, they rely on on, uh, on, on health systems huh? uh, since since many uh, decades, where, whereas these environmental health service system huh, is is rather new. Uh, I think um, essentially uh, everywhere does. I mean, for here, like, as you know, one difference is also that in, in some districts uh, we work, uh, there are already existing structures and these structures can also be a traditional structures, whereas in others, uh, uh, 
uh, the, 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 there is nothing here, so we would really need to uh, start working more or less uh, from the scratch. Um, you, as, you, as you know, also we have a planning workshop uh, soon, and it's particularly on how to better integrate these uh, the, the, the natural resource management uh, systems. But I, I, I think perhaps also on one, at one point, we all need to better understand how environmental services can, can look at. For example, in Mongolia, I was just thinking if you have ever done there an environmental uh, risk assessment around mining sites, for example. Uh, so, so could such a, a One Health risk assessment uh, be, be a shared tool uh, to, to also then more quickly identify the more church and service needs. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And, and I mean, I think, I, I think we're still, I, I think Hill is a very good opportunity to really try and move that thinking forward about, you know, what, what is the health or, or how do we how do we monitor the success of one health as 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 one health you know rather than those those three components uh, it, it, how, how do we really bring those together as one system and um, how do we as one approach how do and, and then to, to monitor that and the impacts of that? You know, I mean, one of our hypotheses, you know, should be, I mean, I, I think it is that that we have those three components, but by these, those three components being integrated, we're going to have greater value, we're going to have greater positive impact than those three components working separately. Um, and I, I think Hill is a great opportunity for, for us to show this. And, and I, I think, you know, in some ways, um, uh, the Swiss would be, you know, would be would be very keen, or, or in some ways perhaps more keen, to see us to be able to come out at the end of heel and say, we we tried this and 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 we've we we piloted it, we tried it, um, uh, we did the research alongside, and and we've shown that a it's a success, but maybe even. No, it could be a bit of a failure. You know, we could come out and say it's too difficult. You know, it's too difficult to bring these three different, very different sectors uh, components together, and it's better to be done separately. Um, and I, I think, um, I, I don't think we should lose this opportunity. I, I don't think we should uh, focus so much on getting success on interventions on the ground. You know, and um, uh, ticking the boxes from an implementation point of view, I think we should really use this opportunity for for really uh, showing that One Health can or or cannot work <laughs> um, with with these three components. Um, and and just just on the issue of environmental services, I mean, you know, I I, I think that's that's another area that's really interesting and that we're not exploring yet is. So we have the range and health as one of the three components. Um, what we do with the range and health in the same way as what we do with livestock health has an impact and a feedback loop to come in on those environmental forces, those influencing forces. So for example, you know, if, if we, the problem is it's so long-term because the problem is if, I, I mean, the thing is, if we improve the rangeland's health, um, it will provide environmental services that will impact the climate eventually, and that will have an impact on all three components, you know, as coming in as one of those environmental forces. And I think, again, you know, this isn't something that we're, we're looking at in that flow. We're looking at bits of it. Um, and yeah, for sure, I think, you know, if, if that meeting is happening, these are some of the things that we can discuss um, about going forward, because I think we have a great opportunity here with HEAL 
and the long the long time the long period of heal to really try and uh, tackle some of these and show what's work and what works and what doesn't work as well as achieving action on the ground Esther, you came back in there. I'm not sure if that's because you want to respond. A short reaction. Thank you very much, Fiona, for, for this reply. Uh, but perhaps also, I mean, as you said, yes, I mean, we are testing something and uh, we're, we're yes, uh, successful or not. I mean, that's also very valuable. Uh, we will see. But uh, perhaps also to, to better test this, we, we will soon so soon need to think more around joint indicators or shared indicators. I think also when we set up a shield and we prepared the lock frame, we we just essentially just way few shared cross-sectoral indicators. Huh? Uh, there's quite a lot of sector-specific uh, indicators, but rather few of, of shared uh, indicators. and. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so that we in future think more about how we can measure performance, if you want, uh, uh, with, with using a set of same indicators. Yeah. Thanks, Esther. And that, that was actually going to be my other question that I was going to pose. Just following up around that M&A sort of side, I, I think it was either in your presentation or the Mongolia um, uh, video that there was sort of this remote sensing angle to to the work that if the the changes changes in rangeland health are happening then they're even detectable at that level so the degree to which then you know within heal given that it has such a long time frame would we be expecting we could achieve something that's detectable at a satellite level do you think or um is that too too far-fetched um, it's, I'm not a remote sensing expert, but um, from my discussions on this, um, remote sensing is a tool, um, but there are issues with it. Um, so, for example, um, the increase of vegetation cover in rangelands can, can be positive, but it can also be a negative. So it could be invasive species, for example. Um, remote sensing, as far as I know, um, uh, uh, everything indicates that the resolutions are, are getting better and the possibilities to detect differences between a friendly species and a non-friendly species are increasing. So as, as these kind of things improve, um, remote sensing will increasingly become a tool um, that, that will be more useful. But I, it always needs to be triangulated with, with other things and verified on the ground. Um, there and, is... and I guess that's where HEAL might actually be quite strong, right? Because it is yeah. a, a, a program that's being delivered on the ground as well. So it's not just about Absolutely. detecting something. So. Yeah, so it would be good to combine it mm. with this. Um, the, the European Space Agency actually has a call out at the moment um, for uh, companies to take on the task of developing our Africa rangeland monitoring system. Um, and, and ILRI is, uh, we're on the steering committee um, and we're also working with, um, uh, well, some of the bidders uh, we have worked with in the past. Um, so this is another, uh, this could potentially be, we, being on the steering committee, we have a lot of influence on asking them to work in different places and on different issues. So this is certainly potentially something we could bring in there with them as well. Great. Are there any other uh, people who'd like to ask a question or make a comment? Or well, Bidasa, perhaps you'd like to uh, introduce yourself and, and talk about some experiences on the ground? Yeah. yeah Hi, Simone, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, as already Fiona, she's indicated uh, yeah, I've seen also the chatting box is also the how we can, because like when we say as range land health, we can as a value chain from soil to the plants and the whole ecosystem. So that on the ground, like uh, because of the high degradation of rangeland is there, so that 
it's also uh, related to the grass issue, the soil issue, and also the invasive species issue. So that if these all are there, uh, so it is also uh, related to the other disease. For example, I recently uh, visited uh, like one site of Moyale, uh, like the toxic uh, plant species are one of uh, the community is uh, uh, rising the issues. The other is like uh, the pattern, the way livestock is nowadays are grazing also one of the issue like the transmission of disease while because of degradation issue, livestock come together to graze uh, long time so that, that's also another point where we are uh, like looking uh, for uh, one health because the transmission of this disease uh, because of most of the ringlands are degraded and the others are uh, invas invaded by bush encroachment or other invasive species. So the grazing land are becoming small so that the livestock come together for a long time. Uh, this is also another issue. So like other minerals before, there is no uh, uh, like the value chain from the soil to the plant also another very important issues. So the grad, uh, when we say rangeland uh, health, it is the whole system. It is not like the plant is, uh, because it is an ecosystem. So as a point, uh, the movement of livestock, uh, the pattern they are grazing because of uh, the land use now, some of some parties are changing, like uh, even the cultivation is entered in the area. So that, that also expenses of the grazing area. This is also another dimension where we are looking because of uh, uh, feed issues, uh, what, whatever, we are looking at the healthy, if there is no feed, this also, if there is shortage of feed, that's also contributing to the disease issues. So I've seen that the, this disease, the grazing pattern, also the season of grazing also related to some diseases, uh, as I've discussed with communities. So on the ground, the bush growth, the degradation also, uh, the top uh, people are. So, so as we start like planning of management so that I've seen that was the entry point because of this participatory rangeland management is an entry point. What is existing? Was there how people are managing their rangeland so that everything is comes through this one? As of the monitoring uh, system, we are uh, having we discuss with Jason like we uh, have a monitoring areas like using land uh, uh, and land PKs was Fiona discussed with remote sensing. That's interesting because as a ground, there are some data should be uh, collected and uh, to verify with remote sensing. So these are also an important point where it's Great, thank you, Vanessa. Um, I'm seeing the time and realizing it's two o'clock already. That seemed to go very fast. <laughs> so um, if there are not any other comments, then I will close out the meeting. Um, but First of all, let me say thanks very much, Fiona, for your time to um, offer your insights into this space. And no doubt we're going to continue the conversation, particularly in the workshop in a, a month, well, two weeks' time or so. Um, and for everyone else who's joined, thank you very much for offering your thoughts and opinions. And we'll hope to see you in the next webinar. Great. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you.